Dear students, welcome to this program on mathematics. Today we are going to discuss from class 9 mathematics book chapter 10 on circle part 1. Here we will discuss about some terms related to circle. So let us see some objects on this screen. As you see, the upper one is a picture of moon as we see from earth, a full moon. And second one is a giant wheel. Let us see some other objects. Here it is a wheel of a cycle, then a 10 rupee coin, a bangle and a round shaped clock. So, why we are uh, here to see some objects which are which have some specific property in their shape. What is the shape? We can say all these objects are circular in shape. If we consider their edges, they form a circle. Then, how do we draw a circle? To draw a circle, we have to use a compass, which is generally exists in our geometry box. Now, if we take the compass, we can fix the pencil and on a plain paper, if we fix the needle of the compass at a point and we revolve the pencil around it, we will draw a circle. So, from this uh, drawing of a circle, we can define this circle. If you see that O is fixed, but pencil is always at a fixed distance. So, we can say that the collection of all the points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in the plane is called a circle. So, you see O is a fixed point here and all the collection of points which on which the pencil has moved is this collection trace a path which is called a circle. And the fixed point, what is it called? The fixed point is called the center of the circle. So, you see the center of the circle is the point where we fix the needle of the compass. Now, what is the fixed distance is called? The fixed distance is called the radius of the circle. Now, in this figure, we have O is the center of the circle and the length OP is called the radius of the circle. Now, the line segment which joins the center O and a point on the uh, circle P is called uh, radius. That means, we can uh, consider the radius as a length as well as a line segment whenever it is required as and when it is required. Now, see a circle divides the plane in three parts. What are they? As you see the yellow line is the circle and inside it which is blackened is one part and the third part is outside the circle. So, what are they called? The first one is called the interior of the circle. That means, it is inside the circle. So, inside the circle which is also called the interior of the circle. This is one part of the plane and the second part is the circle itself. 
and which is the third part? The third part is outside the circle, which is also called the exterior of the circle. So we have thus three parts on the plane which is divided by the circle. So if we consider it as a as a sets uh, of points, we have three disjoint sets here. One is interior, that means no point in interior is a point on the circle. Similarly, no point in the exterior of the circle is a point on the circle. Now, how to geometrically uh, we can uh, prove that a point on the plane is either inside the circle or outside the circle. That means in the exterior of the circle or, the, or on the circle or at the exterior of the circle. Let's draw a circle. If this one is a circle and O is the center. So here it is a plane. This is our circle. Inside it is the interior of the circle and outside this is the exterior of the circle. If I put a point here, say the point is A. Now join the line OA. So the line length of the line OA whether it is greater than radius if OP is the radius you see it intersects the circle at say X. So definitely OA is greater than OX that means OA is greater than radius R. Now you see where is A? A is at the exterior of the circle. So when A is at the point is at the exterior of the circle, the length of the, the distance of the point from the center is always greater than the radius. Now you see if we take a point inside the circle or in the interior of the circle, let it be B. Now join the line OB. Now what is this length OB and the uh, radius? Definitely OB is less than radius R. That means B is interior of this is at the interior of the circle and the distance of the point from the center is less than the radius. So whenever such case arises that point is always inside the circle or in the interior of the circle. If it put a point here say on the circle let it be C O C as you know what is by the uh, definition of radius the distance between the point on the circle and the center of the circle is the radius. So OC is the radius. So whenever a point, the distance of a point from the center is equal to radius, then it is always on the circle. So we can mathematically show that the point is in the interior of the circle or in the exterior of the circle or on the circle. Now let us take two points on the circle P and Q. You see if you take two points P and Q on the circle then the line segment PQ is called a chord of the circle. Okay? So, a chord is a line segment joining two points on the circle. Now, if we consider another chord which passes through the center O, then the chord is called the diameter of the circle. Then, 
how many diameters can be drawn that means the number of cords drawn through the point of center as you know we can draw infinite number of lines through a given point so we have many infinitely many uh, diameters and see a diameter is the longest cord if we compare here pq and pr the longer one is pr because it passes through the center and here another diameter is also given ab so pr and ab are the diameters and their length must be equal so we can say that all diameters have this same length and what is that length you see o is the center and oa is a, a radius and ob is also a radius so the diameter is twice the length of the radius now you see length of a diameter is equal to 2 times the radius now if we consider the two points pq and the two parts to which uh, this uh, points pq divides the circle we have two parts you see one is upper part as it is shown in this figure and this and the lower part upper one is smaller one and the lower one is longer one so a piece of a circle between two points is called an arc so here we have two arcs but with the same name we name both the arcs by pq but one is smaller one and another is longer one and the longer one is called the major arc you always remember this the longer one is called major arc pq though the same uh, naming is there p and q same points so we can say the longer one as major arc pq and the shorter one as minor arc pq so whenever we get two points on an arc we can see two arcs one is major arc and another is minor arc but when we consider the end points of diameter then we have two arcs which are equal in length so such equal as a length of arcs are called semicircle so here as you see in this picture pq is the diameter and we have on both sides of pq we have two arcs which are of equal length so these two parts are called semicircles now you see the length of the complete circle is called its circumference so half of it is semicircle and the complete so length of the complete circle is called the circumference of the circle now let's consider other uh, related terms of the circle now here we can see a cord in the middle of the uh, inside the uh, cord inside the circle now before going to discuss about this if we have two points on the uh, uh, circle and draw a cord then what about the points of the cord which are not the end points or not on the circle definitely if the uh, end points of a cord are not considered the all other points of the cord always exist in the interior of the circle now you see what is segment here we can see a cord is there and this cord divides the whole circular region 
into two parts. So, what are they? The region between a chord and either of its arc is called segment of the circular region. So, here we have two parts, one is the bigger one and the other is bounded by the smaller arc. As we know, the bigger arc or the arc of longer length is called major arc. So, the segment related to this longer one is called major segment. Similarly, the region bounded by the chord and the minor arc means the arc of smaller length is called minor segment. So, the circle is divided by the chord, the, uh, the circular region divided by uh, the chord into two segments. One is major segment and the other is minor segment. Now, let us consider other terms of uh, a circle. Let us see, here we can see that the circle is again divided into two parts, but in some different way. So, what are this way? You see, the end points A and B of the circle are connected or joined with the center and the region is bounded by this ready and the arc. So, such region is called the sector. That means, the region between an arc and the two ready joining the center to the ends point, uh, end points of the arc is called a sector. Now, you see the sector which is related to minor arc is called minor sector. Similarly, the major arc corresponds to is called major sector. Here also, we can divide the circular region into two parts. Those are two sectors. One is minor sector and the other is major sector. So, what happens if the two ready are on the same line? Then we can say that when two arcs are equal, that is each is a semicircle, then both segments and both sectors become the same and each is known as semicircular region. Let us understand this, uh, try to understand it. If this ready are on the same line, then the uh, this will constitute a diameter. So, as we know, the end points of a diameter divides the circle into two semicircles. So, the sector will become a semicircular region. Similarly, in this case, in case of segment, if this chord will be the longest chord, that means diameter, again we have two regions which are of uh, which are equal and those are called semicircular region. Now, let us see some questions related to circle. Does the center of a circle lie on the circle? As you know, when we draw the circle, we fix the point and then we move the pencil around it. That means, this fixed point is inside the circle. So, we can say that the center of a circle lies in the interior of the circle. So, it is not a part of the circle. Let us take another question. The question is, where does a point lie whose distance from the center of a circle is greater than its radius? As you see in the board, here A O is greater than radius O X and, and from this figure, we see that A is in the exterior of the circle. So, we can say 
that a point whose distance from the center of a circle is greater than its radius lies in the exterior of the circle. Let us take another question. The question is, which is the longest chord of a circle? As we discussed, the longest circle, the longest chord of a circle is called the diameter of the circle. Now, when ends of an arc are the ends of a diameter, then what is the arc called? As you know, when the end points of diameter are there, it divides the circle into two equal parts. So, we can say that when ends of an arc are the ends of a diameter, then the arc is called semicircle. Let us take another question. The question is, what is the region between an arc and chord of a circle? You know that the region between the arc and chord of a circle is called a segment. Let us take another question. In how many parts does a circle divide the plane on which it lies? As we know that one is the circle itself, one is the interior of the circle and the other is the exterior of the circle. So, the circle divides the plane on which it lies into three parts. Those are interior of circle, exterior of circle and the circle itself. So, dear students, today we learn about the different terms of circle. Hope you understand. Let us conclude it. Thank you.